Hello, Internet. It is I, Malik Aaron Aaron, and welcome back to Box Office Predictions. Today, we're going to be talking about the boy and the heron. So, as usual, we're going to be going over the pros and cons. So, let's get to it. Pros. So, this movie is from one Hayao Miyazaki. And if you know who that is, then you should know he is responsible for movies that are considered absolute gems like absolute classics in the world of animation i mean let's just go through his uh resume i mean i'm using both like this and like his wikipedia page off screen because it's the way i get the accurate like some the accurate english english names here okay i mean we got Let's see, my, my Neighbor Tokoro, which is 96. Kiki's Delivery Service. Uh, let's see. Uh, Princess uh, Monoke. I think I said that right. If I butcher these names, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, Spirited Away, that's a huge one. I mean, uh, Princess uh, Monoke, that was initially the biggest film in Japan. And then Spirit Away absolutely crushed that record. It held that record for t- almost 20 years until it was overtaken by the Demon Slayer Mugen Train movie. But yet Spirit Away, not only that, didn't make a lot of money. It's actually his biggest movie. But it also won the Oscar for Best Animated fi- uh, Feature. The first non-English uh, movie to do so. So that's extremely impressive. Then there's other movies. There's Howl's Moving Castle, Ponyo, The Wind Rises, which The Wind Rises, that was supposed to be his last movie. He retired for a bit before he decided to come back and eventually make The Boy and the Heron. So, yeah, Hayao Miyazaki, he has a hell of a resume, to say the least. And, yeah, so definitely... Anyone who's watching this movie is watching it because he made it. 100%. No doubt about it. And also the fact that it's a Studio Ghibli movie. I mean, if you haven't heard of Miyazaki, you've at least heard of Studio Ghibli, who's, you know, the production company behind a lot of his works. Pretty much all of his works. Um. So, yeah, and Studio Ghibli, or, or you see here, you know, Spirit Away, Princess Monoke, uh... I believe this is Howl's... Yeah, this is Howl's Moving Castle. Yeah, and Ponyo, and When Rises, and... Yeah. Studio Ghibli. So, because this is Studio Ghibli, because this is Hayao Miyazaki, they're obvious draws. No doubt about it. So, that's a big old pro, having <laughs> Miyazaki's name... At, you know, this being a Miyazaki movie, and a Studio Ghibli movie. So, that's a big pro. Another pro is that this movie, when it came out several months back in Japan, uh, back in uh, July, it did quite well for itself, especially considering the fact that this movie had a very unusual marketing campaign, which was no marketing campaign at all. Like, literally, all they showed was a poster, very basic poster of the movie. That's it. No trailer, no clips, no synopsis no casting up none of that all the traditional stuff you see in marketing none of that was present with this movie when it released earlier this year in japan and you know one could say that's a big old gamble (laughs) huge gamble like you're basically you you better hope people show up (laughs) when you do that and people did show up and the movie did quite well for itself. I mean, sure, it didn't do as well as some of his other movies, but still did all right for itself. So, yeah, the fact that it was a success in Japan definitely bodes well here. So that's a pro. Another pro are the reviews for this movie, which are and they are spectacular. Uh, it has a ninety-five percent critic score. 90% audience score, which isn't... I thought it would be a little higher than that, but that's not a bad number. And its cinema score... What is its cinema score? A-. minus. That's 
fine. I really thought it'd be like an A, but an A minus, that, that's not too bad. So overall, word of mouth seems to be good. Not like through the roof good, but really strong though. So critic score, audience score, cinema score, all solid. So that's going to label that as a pro. Another pro is that competition, like there's obviously no direct competition for this. I mean, the closest thing this has is like Godzilla minus one. That's because both movies are, you know, Japanese. Even then, they're completely different genres. So comparing the two is just (laughs) kind of, this is not going to happen. And everything else is just kind of old or is already like played out like say renaissance like that movie's gonna take a fall this weekend so born to heron has nothing to really worry about this weekend it's probably it's gonna win the weekend according to the numbers i've seen so yeah direct competition is non-existent overall competition is pretty lackluster for now at least so i'm gonna label that as a pro Let's see, another pro I can think of. Oh, it's Thursday preview numbers are really strong. Had open with uh, almost 2.4 million Thursday Thursday night, which definitely shows you that people have been paying attention to this movie and there is definitely demand to see this movie, just like how there was demand to see Godzilla Minus One. Despite the fact that both movies have a relatively muted marketing campaign by normal standards. But the hardcore fans, they are there. They were there. They showed up. (laughs) And yeah, so Thursday previews, quite strong. I mean, actually, it's stronger than Godzilla Minus One, funny enough. I mean, that had a Thursday preview of 2.1 million. So that's a great sign. Godzilla Minus One opened to double digits. So yeah, 11 million. So that's great. So, yeah, I'm definitely labeling that as a pro. It's very strong Thursday previews. And I think that's it. I think that's all the major stuff. Okay, so cons. I have a very strong feeling in my gut this movie is going to be very front-loaded. Because this is being marketed as Hayao Miyazaki's last movie. Although they did that with Wind Rises. And that didn't exactly pan out. (laughs) So... Here they're saying it's his last movie, but some people are like, mm, I don't know. That's why I put that last in quotation marks in the thumbnail, because you never know sometimes. Sometimes when people say like, oh, I'm done, like they don't really mean it. It rarely, they really like stick to it. Like say, Logan, that was supposed to be Hugh Jackman's last portrayal. His last movie is Wolverine. But then Deadpool 3 happened, and he's coming back as Wolverine. So, yeah. I'm not... I'm not gonna... I'm not too sure this is gonna be Miyazaki's last movie. We'll see. We'll see if he actually sticks to his retirement this time. But, yeah. So this movie's gonna be front-loaded, because all those Studio Ghibli fans, they're gonna show up day one. They're gonna be, like, the main demographic. And... I don't think the, I don't think it's like a, I'm losing my train of thought, but like the, this movie does exactly have like a wide net. Okay. It doesn't like, it's, it's kind of in a bubble, a bit of a bubble. Like if you're a Studio Ghibli fan, like this is the event of the year for you. But if you're not like this, I guess people just either don't care that much so this or they they just straight up don't care that much so for obviously the people who are going to watch this immediately are going to be studio ghibli fans and miyazaki fans and it's probably going to fall off from there because i don't see this like having like a strong a strong boost after thursday so yeah the likely the likelihood of this being front loaded is very high and i'm going to label that as a con another con is that after this weekend, things are really going to ramp up when it comes to competition. Next weekend is going to be Wonka. Then after that, a bunch of Christmas movies, movies opening around Christmas or on Christmas. It's a lot. It's a whole lot. I don't think this movie's going to survive all that. So, 
Yeah, upcoming Christmas competition. The barrage of Christmas movies. Yeah, that's going to be a con. Definitely. Uh, I think that's really it, though. Yeah, I think that's it. So, opening weekend. I think from what the early numbers I've seen, this will definitely hit double digits. I think 10 million, maybe 10 to 12 million is likely opening weekend. And it's total... Um, I have maybe 20, less than 20. I'm going to go with that because anime, well, this isn't like other anime movies I've talked about, you know, movies that are already based off uh, established franchises, so like a Dragon Ball or a Demon Slayer or a Jujutsu Kaisen Zero or a One Piece. It's not like that, really. Um, but still, that anime crowd that, you know, people who love Japanese animation, they will show up, but they will, but it's, like, they, <sighs> trying to think of the right way to say it, like, that crowd, they burn bright, but they burn, but it burns real fast, too, <laughs> so, yeah, dealing with that is definitely an issue, but yeah, I'm gonna say, like, 20 million, just 20 million, maybe, let me, yeah, 20 million, I'm just gonna go with that, just to be real safe. And actually, you know, twenty to twenty-five million, just to be safer. So yeah, twenty to twenty-five million. I'm gonna go with that. And that's it for that. So we got three more movies to talk about. Two of which are re-releases. Really love those. And a movie called The Oath, a movie I've never heard of before. So that's great. It's gonna be a real long night for me. <laughs> so. Stay tuned for those videos, but yeah, that's it. That's all. Make sure to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment, turn on notifications, share the whole drill. Go check out more videos like this. I got playlists on the homepage, all previous uh, prediction videos. I've manned the channel. I think I've, I think I've done like a similar movie to Boy and the Heron like earlier this year. I think was it. Let me see. Uh. Suzme, Suzme, I forgot what it was called. It's, it's kind of like that. Um, that was like earlier this year. So if you want to watch that video or any other ones I've done on the channel, any of the projection videos I've done on the channel, go right ahead. There's also the canceled series where I go over all the movies that were supposed to come out but didn't. Never talked about Boy and the Heron before, so there's that. Um, I just made a canceled episode like of like a what an hour or so ago. <laughs> Um, about the bike riders and the underdogs and horoscopes. So you want to watch that episode or any other ones, all hundred, all 221 episodes. You want to watch them all. You want to binge them all, watch them from beginning to now. Highly encourage you to do that. So go do it. There's also box office recaps where I go over the box office results for any particular month. My November recap, I just put on the channel. So there's that. And my December recap won't be till... The first week of January before Beekeeper and all these. Before the weekend of January 12th. Let's go with that. Before that weekend. That's when that December recap will drop. So stay tuned for that. But if you want to watch any of the past recap videos of Man the Channel. You can go right ahead. And yeah that's it. That's all. I am out. Goodbye.